be the case not that not exactly everybody has arrived yet but even so i think we should start with this morning's program because we have a very dense schedule we have five kind of case studies that will give a hands-on experience of dealing with equivalents and matters around it uh, we have about say um, maybe 15 to 20 minutes for each of the uh, for each of the presentations. What I would like the speakers also to, to focus on, or maybe we can elicit that later, uh, success factors and non-success factors. So why, why does something work and why does something maybe not work? I mean, we can, we can and I think we should be quite open about uh, things that work and things that do not work because all of us can learn also from things that maybe do not work. Okay, so may I, may I ask our colleagues from Jordan to come to the floor, yes. please, and uh, give, us, give us your presentation, please. Um, you will need the mobile, have you got the mobile microphone because the interpreters will need it, is it anywhere around? Uh, just a second, if not, I will, I will ask you to maybe sit here if we don't have the mobile mic. It's so easy for me to sit down. I always go when I'm standing up. Uh, <laughs> okay, now you're getting the mobile mic because otherwise the interpreters will not know what you are speaking and cannot translate. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I think it's a bit loud, so I will, I will try to whisper until they change it from the control room. Well, first of all, thank you very much for coming on time with the very, very, very heavy dinner last night. I thought half of you may not be able to make it. What we will talk about, actually, is the recognition of universities and equivalence of degrees in Jordan, basically the presentation is split in two parts. The first one is the regulations itself, which I will cover, and then doing the regulations, which is done by the ministry, my colleague Suha will cover after that. I will try to be extremely brief in my, in my presentation so that she will have more time, hopefully, and then if there's time for discussion. So the framework for the regulations in Jordan, we have a law of higher education and scientific research, and the, the doing actually law in Jordan it's really a very complex a process because it has to go through the cabinet, the Council of Ministers, and then passed uh, after they approve it, it goes to the parliament, and then after that, at the end, it's issued by a royal decree by the king, which, is, which takes a very long time usually, not easy to change. In the law, there is a statement article that says that the ministry is responsible for doing this job. And based on that, actually, uh, there are bylaws issued by the cabinet also that will detail how it is done, uh, and this lasts usually four years. It's very high-level committee chaired by the minister, deputy minister is member, and other deputy minister of education member, and ex 12 experts, and so forth. So it's very extensive committee, as a matter of fact. And then the scope of the committee is again defined also by the bylaws, by the cabinet, and they are in charge, basically, in all of this business, recognizing universities outside Jordan, and how the equivalence is done. Now, the equivalence, the actual details, which is the day-to-day -day work of what does the ministry do, this is again issued by regulations by the Minister of Higher Education and Scientific Research because the ministry is actually in charge of, of all these tasks. Therefore, the minister issued a very extensive regulations that details every single task, how it is done, and so on. Therefore, before I continue further, I just want to make sure that is it success or failure? It is success because there are very, very, very clear, actually, regulation for, for all of this for many years. And we will look at the case studies about what has been, you know, how is it going and so on, and in terms of numbers and, and all of this. And 
If it is success, why shall we talk? Because we would like to share experiences. I'm sure that we can do better when we take the Egyptian experience, the German experience, and so forth. So, the regulations for recognition uh, and equivalence, again, they talk about the procedure for equivalence. So, from the minute a candidate uh, comes to make a request, he or she will fill application form, it's available online, what documents to submit, and then what does the ministry do by checking this or not? If he's happy, he will go back with the equivalence. If not, what he will do, he can appeal. If, again, he's not happy, he can go to court. All of this actually is specified. So, uh, again, there is now, if we talk about requirements, actually, it is a split between if someone gets the bachelor's degree or the master's degree or the PhD, for each one of them, what are the prerequisites for equivalence of his degrees. Again, this is stated in, the, in these regulations. Of course, a copy of this is already available on the website. I saw it last night, actually. I'm sure with other presentations. Therefore, the purpose here is just really to open your eyes about what is going on. The details, I'm sure you will read, and we will be available. We will be very happy after that to address any specific comment. So that, that is for the first level first degree bachelor's degree. Again, it talks about the transfer of students, which is very important for us, actually, for mobility, because we do encourage our students to study abroad, whether in Arab countries or in Europe. Uh, of course, some fields have uh, different specificities, like medicine, pharmacy, and so on. This also addressed in the regulations. And then, uh, of course, it, briefly, it covers almost all the criteria that was mentioned yesterday by our colleagues regarding study period and all of this. Now for the second level master's degree, same thing exactly also. What are the prerequisites, how it is done, and, and so on. So I will just skim over this actually very quickly. Uh, it goes to the PhD degrees. Again, the PhD, it depends also on a number of issues that will determine the duration of a study and so on, as we can see here. Same thing. Now, there is a special consideration, and I thought this is really worth talking about for a minute or two, which is a joint study programs held between two or more institutions. Again, whenever we have, actually this is general umbrella to all our equivalence of degrees. These are given special considerations as well as universities that follow, that follow the Bologna process also. E even if the university or the degree was not accepted before either of them, then if the university fulfills these criteria, it is considered positively from our side, the minister, and therefore a recognition of that university or equivalence of his degree will be actually almost straightforward or much simpler. Uh, I think this is uh, mostly what I would like to say on my part, and I'm very grateful, as a matter of fact, uh, that my colleague, Soha, was, I talked with the Deputy Minister and the Minister, and both of them were happy to send her with me to talk about what is the day-to-day -day work that is done. Soha is the Director of, the, uh, of this department at the Ministry. So, Soha, please, you can come. Now, implementing the regulations, we have organizational structure, Directorate of Recognition of Non-Rodinian Higher Education Institutions and Degrees Equivalency. We have two sections uh, or divisions, Recognition and Equivalency Division and Certificates Authentication Division. Now, the duties and responsibilities of uh, the Authentication Division is to carry out the procedures of authentication of the certificates and academic documents and review them, uh, and re review them uh, in Jordan and 
whether they are in Jordan or abroad, they have to review all the academic documents uh, and to, ver to verify their validity and follow up issues, issues of fraud certificates with the relevant authorities. Now, duties and responsibilities of uh, the recognition and equivalency division. Uh, check received documents for equivalency when the students will come back home or come back from any country. They have their certificates. They, uh, they come to our ministry and they, fulfill, they fill the application form. Then uh, the, uh, the employees in the, uh, this section has to receive the documents and collect all the uh, document information uh, of the academic degrees submitted for equivalency and uh, verify their validity, provide the committee with any comments they have. Uh, committee, the committee examines the submitted documents and make decision, then follow up implementation of the committee's decision. The ministry issues the equivalent certificate after being signed by the minister or his or her deputy. The equivalent certificate must indicate the adopted education system, methods of acquiring the certificate, period required to obtain the university degree and type of study. And this is because we have uh, some countries, uh, students graduate with a three period uh, BA degree and other countries four period, other and some other countries like uh, Russia, they finish their five years and we consider it as BA. Therefore, we have to write uh, what uh, the, uh, we have to write the, uh, the type of a study and, uh, and also the period. Uh, we also, we have to, uh, nowadays we started to mention the, uh, what kind of adopted education and the method uh, and type of a study. It's because we, we uh, recognize the uh, online learning, as I said before, and that was published in the official gazette. Um, therefore, we have to mention uh, the way or the type of a study, whether it is online, distance learning, open learning, or traditional. Now, collect the necessary information on the systems of institutions of higher education abroad, study such information, and prepare reports and present them to the committee. Sometimes we have to collect the information about any country, uh, the information about higher education and the system of education. If we don't have list of recognized universities, make a study, collect the data, and submit it to the committee, then they have to make their decision whether to uh, recognize this university or not. Uh, publish and modify lists of recognized non-Rodanian higher education institutions and their branches with which grant academic degrees not less than the first level university degree, bachelor's degree, pursuant to the decision of the committee. So, we do not study uh, colleges which gives uh, two years, uh, two years which is uh, associate degree. All what we have to do is uh, to check whether it is recognized in the country itself, the, the, where the students study. And if it is recognized, we don't have to check anything. If it is uh, a public uh, institute, it's okay. Now, address all issues related to the regulation or to the recognition of non rodinian higher education institutions and guide the students to study abroad uh, in international uh, institutions. Some students before, when they finish their high school, they come to the ministry and they start to have some queries about uh, studying abroad. We can guide them where to study, uh, in which university, what is the better for him. Receive and verify the applications for recognition by non jordanian higher education institutions. Now, sometimes if the, uh, the institution, the higher institution is not mentioned in the list we have for universities, they can apply in the uh, application form uh, in order to be studied by the, the higher committee or the committee, they make their decision. So if the institution is not, is not recognized by our, our ministry or it is not mentioned in our list, all what they have to do, they have to go to the website and to fill the application form uh, for recognition and then certify it from Ministry of Foreign Affairs or, and the cultural attaché 
if we have Jordanian cultural attaché in that country, submit it to the ministry and we study it. Now, we have two kinds of education. We, start, we have traditional education. Uh, we, we gave the, the definition of a traditional education, which is face-to-face -face direct communication between student and lecturer inside the educational institution and its facilities in a specific place and time. This is, we consider it a traditional education. The student had to be in the same country, in the institution, that he has to attend all the lectures. Recognized higher education institutions are available. You can see them on this website. Now, uh, I give an example of number of recognized higher education institutions for traditional education. Now, this is for uh, EU uh, member states. You can uh, see here the country and the number of recognized uh, higher education institutions. Here is another chart. Now, a uh, number of recognized higher education institutions for tradition education, some partner countries. You can see uh, here how many uh, recognized institutions are there. Now, approved world ranking. In addition to the list we have for recognized educational institutions, we also recognize the, the, the following uh, ranking, which is in the, um, recognized by the ministry. Now, the academic ranking of world universities, which is uh, Shanghai, according to Shanghai, we, we recognize the first 500 universities, even though they do not submit uh, uh, even though they did not submit the application for recognition. So they don't have to apply for the ministry, they don't have to fill an application, we, uh, we recognize them. And of course we recognize them for traditional education. Now we will come to uh, uh, non-traditional education. Now Times uh, Higher Education World Universities ranking top 200 universities. So if the student uh, join any of, these, uh, any of these institutions, he doesn't have to refer to the ministry. He can study there and then when he finishes, he brings his certificates and documents needed and submit for uh, equivalency. Uh, Webometrics ranking of world's universities, top 500 university, universities. Now note, uh, higher education institutions that are not listed as recognized institutions for, tech, for traditional education may obtain recognition by submitting the information request form, as I said before. And you can find this uh, clear on our website. This is uh, an example of the list of recognized uh, universities in Spain. We have 25 universities. Now, table of European degrees equalized. You can see the country and the year from 2005 and some of them from 2004 up to 2011. You can find out the number of degrees equalized by our ministry. Now, uh, here I gave an example of, uh, the, uh, on the equivalency of European degrees. I gave an example uh, uh, of the French degree you can see here how we uh, equalize the certificate. And this is for uh, grants equals. This is Italian degree, length of a study, and Jordanian equivalence. This is, this is shown, uh, this is only an example of how we, uh, how we equalize the uh, French and Italian certificates. Non-traditional education. Non-traditional education depends mainly on interactive connections, connections through modern technological means of communication. Types of non-traditional education recognized by the ministry, online learning, blended learning, open learning, with the exclusion of education by correspondence. We do not recognize uh, any kind of education which is by correspondence. Only higher education institutions listed in the following ranking are recognized by Ministry for non-traditional education and this is the academic ranking of world, uh, world universities, Shanghai, the top 500 universities. 
one Shanghai, we can say it is our first experience uh, of online universities. Uh, we don't want the students to go to any online. We don't want the students to uh, uh, just uh, bring fake universities and so on. So the, five, the top 500 universities, we find out that they are mostly traditional universities and uh, they started to, uh, to offer uh, online degrees. And uh, this is on, uh, only an example. Of course, later on, we will study more universities and we will make a study about online universities. Um, we also, that doesn't mean the only uh, top 500 universities are recognized. Now, if any university offers online study or open learning uh, study program, they have to, to fill the, uh, the information request form, which is, uh, which is uh, made for uh, online study. They have to fill it and submit it to the uh, ministry. Then the, uh, the committee will study the information collect the data, make sure uh, what kind of education they have. If it, uh, if it fills uh, our requirements, then it will be recognized. So it doesn't mean we only recognize the 500 universities and, the, and, and that's it. Because if we recognize the university for traditional education, that doesn't mean we have to recognize the online study program. This is what I'd like to make sure of this. Now, we also have some restrictions. Uh, degrees obtained via non-traditional education, uh, the following shall not be considered for equivalency. Now, all uh, medicine and uh, the industry, pharmacy, nursing, etc. Um, now, and other sciences that require laboratories and practical application. Higher education institutions that are not listed uh, as a recognized institution for non-traditional education. As I, said, as I said before, they may obtain recognition by submitting the information request uh, form for institutions of higher education that offer non-traditional education. Thank you for listening. Uh, thank you very much for your very interesting presentation and also for keeping, uh, for keeping the time. Uh, I can allow one or two questions, but real questions, not, not so much comments. Uh, there is a question from Mr. Halal and another question here. So the two gentlemen. Uh, okay, the third question, but that's about it then. Okay? Because we... Otherwise, we cannot keep the, the, the time slot. Right. Uh, the microphone goes to Mr. Halal, please. Thank you. Thank you very much for a really very informative presentation. Uh, uh, quickly, uh, you, 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 you have explained to us what you have done, but you didn't tell us what is the concept of well, the, the recognition. It's one to one. I, I, I saw in your presentation this is four years, three years, uh, and you know, it's okay. But uh, if, for, for example, I have a four year degree and, and uh, you have in your country a five years degree, uh, we, can you recognize it? On what base? Second is the worldwide, the, the world ranked universities. You said, online uh, universities, on, on, uh, you know, uh, for the world line, uh, uh, ranked universities are recognized. They don't offer online. The, 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 uh, for example, I give you another you know, question. Cairo University, Open Learning University. Cairo University is, is among the 500. Mm -hmm. Do you recognize automatically what is given by Cairo University Open Learning Center? Okay, that's it? Yeah. Okay. Can I answer the first question? 
Okay. Uh, now, if you if you earn a degree with, uh, for example, a BA degree for uh, four years, that will be equalized if your system in your country allows you to finish four years. Now, the student, the the committee, the committee have to study the study plan. The study plan. If it is similar to the one they have in Jordanian universities, then they will give the equivalence of the certificate. If no, they study the, the now they have to make sure that it is according to our uh, system for example now um, for example some universities uh, offer uh, five uh, only five years in uh, dentistry four years in dentistry like in Pakistan now when the uh, educators and the uh, higher committee studied the study plan they find out that it is not similar to the one that is offered in the uh, University of Jordan and uh, that's why they have in this case they, uh, they ask the student to study another year and then they, uh, they get their uh, degree equalized. Now as for the uh, second question uh, regarding uh, Shanghai, uh, as I said before, we want to limit the students uh, for studying online. We do not to make, it, to make the doors open. We know that most universities in uh, Shanghai, they do not offer online learning. Some of them they do, some of them they do and we have to find out that but we don't want to open the doors to all students and to bring fake certificates or fraud certificates or go to uh, and the, or maybe uh, or mills i mean mills uh, certificates so this is why because all the students were arguing us that the word is uh, um, is going fast and it goes rapidly you have to to be with the education with online and so and so they made a big argue for us and this is why we said okay we recognize the first 500 universities because we are sure the, we are sure of the quality of education there but if any other institution offer uh, online he, they have to uh, to fill the application form and we have an example of this in jordan uh, in uh, universities uh, in jordan that the hashimite uh, university i believe that they started offering online uh, certificate they, uh, online degrees and uh, they have uh, the uh, the center there so just to 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 limit the students not to go to any university or to study any kind of online program if i may add a short comment only well, uh, regarding the principles of Professor Hilal, thank you very much for the question first. Regarding the principles for recognition or equivalence of degrees, actually, uh, there are criteria by the, by the regulations of the minister in Jordan, and they go, they talk about a study period, which is not necessarily equal to the study period in Jordan, because someone may get a bachelor's degree from UK in three, three years, years' time, if he has the A-level, but it also includes subject matter experts, as a matter of fact, that they look in detail about what the student has studied in his university education, mm -hmm. and so on, for a number of principles, as a matter of fact. Regarding the online education, well, I agree with you, it's a very risky area, but education, as the example was quoted yesterday about law and the Princeton University, I mean, of course, Princeton is the best in law, although it doesn't have law school, which means the reputation of the universities are important for recognition, so we hope that the top 500 will give good online education. If this happened not to be the case in the future, we are flexible. Regulations are put there to be changed with time as well and refined. Um, just a few questions. Uh, the first one, um, uh, what's the period of uh, reassessment or reappraisal of universities after being recognized? So do you, uh, after being recognized, would they be reappraised or reassessed every three years, five years, four years, especially that the ranking is annually? That's one. Uh, the second, um, what would you do in a case of uh, somebody who's earning a PhD from the UK uh, in two years and a half, where your requirement here mentioned a minimum of three years. Uh, 
the uh, prerequisite in the UK system is a minimum of two years. I know it's very rare, but it happens sometimes that somebody would get a PhD in two years and a half uh, from a prestigious university like Edinburgh or uh, Imperial College or whatever. Uh, the final question, I don't think it's only for Jordan, but maybe also for everybody, uh, given that this department of equivalence at every country definitely have a huge database of uh, degrees, uh, awards, um, information about certain cases. Um, would you make that available to everybody else to share and to, um, uh, to, to make use of? Okay. Well, I cannot answer the first question. I will, gi I will give it to my colleague, which is how often does, does the ministry relook re into this every year, two years, etc. But I will go to the second question. The period of study when we say three years again, uh, two years and a half, yes, he or she will be recognized. I finished my PhD in two and a half years. I submitted it a long, long time ago to the ministry and it was approved in a very short time, as a matter of fact. Therefore, again, when they say three academic years, they, they really look at the hours, study, credit hours, etc. they have studied, and the, the thesis, and, and all of this. Uh, so that's the second question. The third question? Database, yes. So you have the first and the third. Okay. So let me answer the first question. Now, if the university appeal in the uh, 500 universities, top 500 universities, and the second year it was not in the ranking, of course that has happened, we look at it annually, but it doesn't mean, since it exists in Shanghai, it means it will be forever the, the good universities, or we consider it as a good university. Of course, we, uh, we study the universities annually also. But that doesn't mean if it is in the first year it was recognized, the second year we will not recognize it. This is for Shanghai. Now, uh, may I uh, uh, comment on something on the second question? Now, uh, the student has to study three academic years. That is for the university, which, is, which uh, um, it depends on the system of uh, study at the university. Now, we ask attendance two years for the students who got the first a level degree and the second level degree. So if he has bachelor and master's, he can finish in two years if it is a scientific uh, field, and he can finish the uh, PhD in one year. We, 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 only, uh, we only ask for one year attendance uh, for other fields, okay? What, if it is uh, humanities or something like this, uh, economic, uh, whatever, we ask only for one year if he has the first, the second degree. But if he has only the first degree and the system of the university allow the students to go directly from the first uh, university level to the third university level without having masters in between, so we ask the student to have three academic years for scientific fields and two academic years for other fields. Okay. Now, as for the third question, uh, you want, uh, I don't know whether I understand your question or not. Uh, you mean you want a database, how we, um, yes, I can make it available, of course, we can make, I give an example only for French and Italian um, degrees and how we uh, equalize their certificates. And of course, uh, I can make this homework when I go back to Jordan and I will make it available for everybody, if you like. Thank you very much. Thank you for, for your presentations. I just want to uh, come back to the question raised by uh, Mr. Hani concerning these uh, uh, top uh, 500 universities uh, proposed by Shanghai ranking, which is uh, really debatable. I'm not going to dwell on that. But I just want to, to say when <coughs> uh, you seem in your presentation that the, 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 the door remains open even for students, uh, graduates from other universities, of course. Uh, but do you mean by that implicitly or explicitly that people, that graduates coming from those 500 
universities, uh, top universities, will be privileged uh, uh, in comparison with the others? Uh, no, they no. will not be privileged. But uh, the, difference is, the yeah. difference is, now we have lists of recognized universities. The student has to go to one of them and study in one of them. And it is already there on our website, the university website, lists of un the recognized universities. You can go to any university. If you study in, in such institution, then your certificate will be uh, equalized. And the, uh, so, but if you go to any institution in which it is not listed in the list, that doesn't mean the committee has to recognize your, cert your degree and uh, equalize the certificate. But if you study in the top 500 universities and you bring, uh, you bring your certificate from there, it is not necessarily to, be to, to this university to be in our list. Because if you try to skim the list, you will find that the top 500 universities are not listed, most of them are not listed in our list because we, we recognize them without having to study them, without having, uh, it is not, without obliging the university to submit the information request. So if you study in any of them and it is not listed in our list, that means we are going to recognize it and we are going to equalize your certificate. Did I make myself clear? Yeah, just in this case, uh, why do you mention, I'm sorry, uh, just to, uh, I, I want to understand more, uh, yeah. if you allow me. Why do, do you mention those top uh, 500 uh, top universities if they are, they have no impact on uh, the recognition, equivalence, and many, many things. If it's the case, if, uh, uh, the, if uh, students coming from those universities have no privilege, they, they are, uh, I mean, uh, uh, we, we have the same behavior towards them than towards the graduates coming from other universities. They, they have no, uh, they, they are, they are, there is no impact of, uh, of uh, uh, in the, the procedure of uh, recognition and many things. You know what I mean? Just to, to, to understand. Thank you very much. Well, actually the whole issue of recognizing universities, equivalence of degrees and so on, is really to safeguard the benefit of the citizen after all. We would like to make sure that when someone studies abroad, he or she has obtained a reasonable education so that he has the legal status to work in that you know, discipline. Therefore, we try to make life easy to citizens, to Jordanians, before going abroad, because we have, I think, more st students study in more than 100 countries in Jordan, I think. Therefore, all this is a guidance, in a sense. It is very dynamic a process that changes with time, simply. And these are the elements of the guiding process that we are doing. Um, thank you very much for the very interesting Jordan case, which sparked off a lot of questions. Um, could we now look at the Israeli experience? Uh, Mr. Timmerman, please.